Hello, beloveds. How are you? <clears throat> How are you on this beautiful, beautiful afternoon? It is Red Sable, <laughs> and you're listening to Fuel Your Soul. I hope you are well. I hope that the day is treating you in a way that makes you feel good and positive and in a, a particularly amazing mood. I hope that whatever it is that you had to struggle through today, you was able to overcome it. And whatever challenges that those may have been, you realize that they are just a moment and they will pass because storms don't come to stay. And I hope that you realize that whatever fails that there may have been, that you also realize that it's a failure for the moment, but we learn from those fails, right? Falls are not failures. They're just a stepping stone away from the successes that we need in order for us to get to where we want to be. So I hope that whatever you are facing today, that you are feeling encouraged, despite whatever it is you're hearing on the news, whatever it is that people are saying to you, I hope that you're feeling encouraged and that you was able to overcome any discouragements because there's a lot of them, right? I struggle through them almost every day, but I have to keep going because I trust and believe that God is with me. So no matter what it is, I'm going to continue to overcome those challenges. Today, I'm going to share with you a couple of things. A little bit of some reading that I had did, so I'm going to share that with you. And it just talks about how we need to stand firm in our power of knowing that we are protected by God so no weapons formed against us will prosper. And the next will be a heavy topic because it speaks about a young woman who is battling mental illness and drug addiction. And it's a heavy topic, but my show is about truth and honesty, transparency in challenges that we go through in life. And sometimes they are not pretty because they're not supposed to be pretty. Sometimes we want to take certain things and stick them in the back of our minds or put them in a closet somewhere or try to bury them in the dirt somewhere. And one day they come out screaming at us in the middle of the street, in the middle of a supermarket, in the middle of the dinner table when we're just having a dinner and something triggers us, that's anxiety. For some, it might be PTSD. For others, it might be bipolar or some other form of of mental and emotional burden that was left because of a traumatic experience that you had that was left because someone did something to you or because you did something to yourself or because you did something to someone else. It comes in waves in different forms. They happen to us when we're younger. They happen to us when we are finding ourselves and trying to figure out who we are and who we want to be and who we were created to be. Because once you get past a certain stage in your life, you start realizing it's not about who you want to be all the time. It's about how God created you and what he wants and needs you to be in order for you to fulfill his purpose. And sometimes we forget about that. And sometimes we just don't know. So we run around chasing after the wind chasing all the rainbows and we fall down and we realize that we are in crooked places, dark spaces with some very wicked, evil people, circumstances, situations 
that pull us to places that we never expected simply because we were only trying to live our lives and do something different to be different, to feel better, to move on to the next level of whatever that is. Because it's different for you and it's different for me, right? But then sometimes we realize, oops. And then that oops turns into a what the hell. And then that what the hell turns into WTF and and a whole bunch of other things. But then we realize we are so out of sorts. We find ourselves in a wilderness somewhere. And we can't see. We can't fight our way out. We're being pricked with all kinds of leaves and, well, not leaves, but branches. We're being bitten by bugs. There are things coming out of the bushes we don't understand and they are attacking us, right? But even in those times, even in those times where you feel like you can't take it anymore, And you feel like you're lost and you're alone and you're by yourself and nobody is listening to you. God is listening to you. And he hears you. He's waiting for you. He's waiting for you to come to him. See, God, he is sovereign. He will go wherever we go. and He will watch. But he is going to come and enter our hearts and our spaces and show us the right path to take. When we open the door and we let him in fully into our hearts, not just a little looking out the peephole and cracking the door open just a little bit because we're afraid if we let him in too much, he's going to see all of our mess, all the muck. And he's not going to want to deal, but that's not true because he already knows what we've done. So I'm going to read a little bit of something that I found extremely helpful for me and hopefully it'll be helpful for you as well. And um, yeah, (laughs) it's based on a devotional that I read and it's called No Weapons. And I thought that would be great for today. So Refueling Sunday episode. So thank you for joining me. <laughs> okay, so the writer is speaking about no weapons formed against us so prosper. And he wants us to soak that in and to embrace it in the fullness that it is because it is true to God's word. If we give in to fear we're giving in to the enemy we're giving in to the devil he wants us to be afraid and then he wants to trick us with all these other things that we think that we need when we don't need those things they're just a distraction to continue to disrupt our relationship with God and when we start to understand that and realize that We'll stop holding on to things like false idols. We'll speak about that in another time. Um, Now maybe we'll speak about that a little bit today. I'll let you know what false idols are because we all have them. And they come in all kinds of different forms. So let's begin. We are going to go into just a little bit of this passage here. It begins, God is stronger than any ploy, plot, or scheme that the enemy can devise. God is your source and strength. God is your strong foundation. He is your weapon against the enemy and every tactic that the enemy tries to release. Choose to surrender to God and your enemies will be at peace. Choose to focus on God and not the enemies that you face. When we put our focuses on what is good and what is love, because God is love, and he shows us what perfect love is, because perfect love does not hold any doubt, 
or fear or animosity. It doesn't boast. It doesn't make you feel less than. It embraces you. And it takes you as you are, faults and all. And it doesn't pass judgment on you. And so that's what God does. He loves us unconditionally. Man cannot do that. Because we were born in a time and space where generations and generations before us were born in sin. So we were born in sin as well. So therefore, we only know what we've seen. We only know what's been taught to us. So we just repeat the same patterns over and over. They may be a little different, but they're still the same patterns over and over again. So I want to find, okay, here we go. Deuteronomy 32, 35, the AMPC version states, Vengeance is mine and recompense. In the time when their foot shall slide, in the time when their foot shall slide for the day of their disaster is at hand. And their doom becomes speedily. And their doom comes speedily. Which means that we lead with our hearts. We are very emotional people. That's how we are. We cannot help it. Well, we can. But we don't. And when we don't, then we go off when we should not go off. God wants us to love our enemies because he wants to handle the enemies. Vengeance does not belong to us as his children. It belongs to him. He turns our enemies and makes them footstools at our feet. We can't do that. There are things that I can imagine all day long about what I want to do to the people that hurt me, right? And I'm sure there are things that you want to do to people that hurt you. But it doesn't matter what you and I could come up with because we think with our human minds. God has a mind of sovereignty, of eternity. He is eternal. He is all-knowing. He is the God of everything that is possible. And if you have read the Bible before, then you will know if he created the world, the universe, he created all of us that's in it, he can destroy it just the same. So yes, he can absolutely take care of our enemies. So that's why he says vengeance is his and not ours. And he doesn't want us to do anything that will create us will push us into a way where we will sin again because he doesn't want us to sin again. Now, that's not to say that we don't sin because we do. Truth be told, we get up in the morning and every day we say we're going to do the right thing and there is something that we are doing during the course of the day that we know is wrong, but we become accustomed to doing certain things our own way. But God has already forgiven us of certain things, but what he doesn't want us to do is go out and blatantly take matters into our own hands, like seeking vengeance against those who have tried to persecute us, who have tried to destroy us, and who have stolen from us, robbed us, beat us, raped us, killed us. He doesn't want us to seek any type of vengeance when it comes to those types of people because he will deal with them and it becomes a a a war of theology and spirituality well a spiritual war is going on between him and the devil and what the devil has unleashed in this world and I know some of you are listening you're not that deep in the word uh, and, and maybe you don't believe at all but you can believe in this don't worry pray over everything if you are a prayer 
a praying person, because I know that I am. Pray over everything. Don't be.